Previously on TV sets. See a sweetness in her smile. Bright light shines from her eyes. Listen, if you start off the show with a bombastic view of the title city, even if you don't actually say it, best believe we're gonna roll some bat marshals on your ass. Roof running, superhero posing, sprinting feet, another useless superhero pose, Randio standing up, excitement? Where the f did this kid come from? The roof dive? Okay, maybe she managed to parkour Plinko down the building, but she sure as shit didn't fly across the road to land on the food truck from this angle. Kitty kid can fly off rooftops and has a sixth sense for milk and grocery bags? This character is OP already, but we barely crossed the minute mark. Also, who buys two half gallons of milk when they can just buy a gallon for less? She just pulled off the Kaiser Soze of dairy deception to grab her lovely lactose, but couldn't swipe this guy's wallet without getting caught? The very idea that Kitty Kid stopped on a rooftop to chug this jug makes me feel disgusting inside. Stay calm, Bruce. God forbid that we get even two minutes into a Batman-related property without seeing Tom and Martha gunned down. Show could have had this plot point show up in a news headline, and not one person would have given a flying batarang. The slain Wayne trope is like the Electoral College. I get that it served a purpose a long time ago, but it might be time for a different take. Also, what's up with these pearls? When we see her take them off, they are clearly all the same size, but once they hit the streets, some of them have shrunk? I've always wanted the story where all of Batman's rogues gallery tracked this asshole down and tortured him for five issues because he created Batman. <laughs> Bathelm scream. In a scenario where all these police officers open fire, wouldn't everyone in the cells be concerned with their lives instead of having a front row seat? These are my pills. This works. We have our hero. You can tell by how suavely he catches the bullet. I'm calling it. The real villain is whoever has the monopoly on yellow tinted light bulbs in Gotham. Oh, the legendary Harvey Bullock. Whether or not Harvey Bullock would have been Jim's partner before he became commissioner is debatable, as is when he even first appeared. Some say it was 1983 with Batman 361, and some say 1974's Detective Comics number 441, which is crazy because we all know Tim Burton didn't invent Batman until 1989. That's Thomas and Martha Wayne. I don't need that kind of hassle. Call Major Crimes. They'd love to have this. Yeah, but they're not here. And your partner is talking to the witness. I'm not sure how that prevents anyone from calling Major Crimes. Also, I'm pretty sure they're too busy sucking as a sh spin off to the closer. <laughs> Jim, our hero, is about to provide comfort to this grieving child who just witnessed his parents' death. When I was about your age, drunk driver hit our car, killed my dad. I know how you feel right now. Way to make this all about you, Jim, dick. James Gordon. Alfred Pennyworth. This is literally the third time in the last three minutes that Jim Gordon has said his full name. This show's first ten minutes have basically been, remember those awesome characters you love from the Batman stories? Here's our younger version of them saying their own names, so you know it's them. The TV show. What exactly is the light source of the titan-sized beam panning in the windows and scorching my retinas? This restaurant owner chose a terrible place to build anything with windows. Don't start talking to witnesses until I say so. I'm still not sure I'm following this whole, if you talk to the witness, the case is yours line of thinking. Jim couldn't give his statement he got from Bruce to some other detectives if the case got passed on? Do have to change his diapers? Grizzled cop doesn't want to be paired with a new cop because he's too old for this shit cliche. She said you were a war hero. And your daddy was a big shot DA back in the olden days. Did she though? Because we saw that entire conversation and I read the subtitles. She says, teach him the ropes. And yes, and the rest of the conversation is just you yelling at her. So when exactly did she have time to express these very cogent thoughts to you? No one will be seated during the Harvey interrogates random stereotypical ruffian types with a hanging light swinging back and forth montage. Just tell me, Ed. I want riddles, I'll read the funny pages. Now we're showing early Riddler? If all these criminals are already around when Bruce is this young, then we're being forced to watch a show about the worst police force in the history of television. And if that's the case, then what are we even doing here? Guess what this is. Inadmissible and improperly documented evidence that never passed through the incredibly important chain of custody? Gotham seems like a horrible place to be, and yet I want to live there immediately. F fireworks. How does professional know the Waynes will be coming down that alley? Jim thinks the Waynes have been killed by a professional contract killer, and this is the question that causes him to reconsider. I am no killer, but if I were, I'd have plans within plans and just go with the one that presented itself. Like, for example, your target's walking into a dark alley. Why didn't we come to her first? She's kind of a last resort. Over the rain in Gotham, it was said that some could hear the tears of the five remaining Papa Roach fans. Then where's my money? The original aim for this character was over-enunciate Mooney. Boy! Sorry. If you let this hair go frizzy, you will be. But wasn't she getting rained on the whole time she was bitch-slapping her employee? 
Jim needs to go down the stairs to the ground level to see the beating in the street, but they should already be on the ground level based on how they entered Fish's hangout. Take it easy, penguin. You know I don't like to be called that. Then how about Joker, Mad Hatter, Clayface, the Ventriloquist, Man Bat, Red Hood, Owlman, Harley Quinn, Deathstroke, or Kite Man? Sorry, I thought we were seeing how many Batman villains we could name in a 50 minute episode. These ladies have been on this stage sexually stretching since Harvey and Jim arrived. Maybe just take a seat in those chairs and wait. Unless, of course, they're just another piece of set dressing the show is using to show us how dark and gritty it can be. You ready, rock and roll? Barbara, I'm beat. And do we really have to go to this thing? No. Considering you have a full roaring fire in the fireplace, I think the set department was already planning on you staying in. I made a promise to Bruce Wayne and I can't deliver. Yes, the show is still using characters' full names for effect. And yes, I will sit it every time it happens. Gordon would most certainly just say I made their kid a promise, but Gotham's got a Gotham, I guess. Fish Mooney heard from one of her fences. Guy tried to sell him an antique. Four strand pearl necklace with gold settings, one strand broken. Great detective work, detective! Except her necklace was a three strand pearl necklace, so. Hi, what's your name? Ivy. <sighs> This rooftop chase is the same rooftop chase in every cop show ever in the history of cop shows. It even pulls the full cliche bingo of an escape through the window cliche. The police yelling, stop, stop or I'll shoot, cliche. Chasing someone down the fire escape so we can get different perspectives cliche. And the classic chase through a restaurant kitchen so we can get loud noise, stuff flying, and a knife as a weapon cliche. Seriously, this scene should have totally cleaned up at the 2015 Vanity Fair Cliche Awards. Hey, Harold, do you think the audience gets that this is gonna be Catwoman? Maybe not. Maybe we could have her lick her ass. Damn it, Harold, she's fucking 15, you sick f Just have her remove her hood with a cat paw motion for fuck's sake. Cats lick their ass. I didn't- Shut up, Harold! You kept your promise. Thank you. Sorry you didn't see a trial. What? I had my palms read once and was told that when the middle finger and ring finger are the same in length like this, that it meant masculine greatness. This is interesting for two reasons. One, Bruce here is going to become Batman, and two, my middle finger and ring finger aren't the same length. Does he know you? Don't. Like I know you. Sure, why not? Add another confusing soap opera-esque plot to the mix. There can never be too many. God knows my husband had his demons, but he never killed nobody. Are you sure? Because he was very much trying to kill Gordon on the rooftop. Shiny shoes, mother of God. First of all, I totally agree with Ken Narlo here that this whole shoe exoneration is a bit of a stretch. But mostly I just wanted to say that shiny shoes, mother of God may be my new favorite phrase to use when I'm frustrated. Shiny shoes, mother of God, are people still setting off fireworks? We killed them. We'd lose our jobs at the very least. Harvey, the same man who said, Somebody takes a cop's gun, you shoot him. That's basic. He is now concerned that he'll get fired for literally saving Jim from being murdered by a suspect? Is this guy drunk or something? Page 457 in the TV trope handbook states, when wanting your character to seem super smart, always show them winning at poker. Unless they are a criminal, then use chess. At least Gotham's going by the handbook. Shouldn't you ask Harvey? He's your partner. I'm afraid he might lie. But Gordon thinks Fish will tell him the truth? The most unbelievable thing about this series might be that Jim wasn't shot dead before the pilot ended. Hey! Wait, I want to die how my father died, peacefully in his sleep. Not like his screaming, terrified passengers. For the love of Jack Keith, legend Nixelson, please tell me this isn't supposed to be the Joker. You snitched to the MCU. The DCEU has no shame. <laughs> Deus Ex Falconica? Please, Mr. Gordon, just let me live. I'll do whatever you say. I'll be your slave for life. Slave for life just happened to be the name of the one-act play I wrote in college about my infatuation with Frosted Flakes and Britney Spears. Also, in another crime show that didn't have all the Batman baggage, this would be a really intense scene. And maybe this would even be a really good show. But since we know he's not going to kill this guy because he's the f***ing penguin, this scene holds zero tension. <laughs> Boy. Good thing you stayed all the way back at the car so you couldn't see all the obvious fake assassination is obvious that was going on. We killed an innocent man. Who was about to stab you? <laughs> man, he held his breath for a really long time. Is he an actual penguin in this version? No one can resist my sweaty balls. <laughs> Jim, you seem like a nice guy, but this is not a city. Or a job for nice guys. Get the message now? Yep. Are you sure? You're a cynic. A slovenly, lackadaisical cynic. <laughs> you can slice him, you can dice him, but the Quinn man just keeps on coming! Hey, Oswald. You wanna turn? May I? Meryl, swing away. Harvey. <laughs> Fish. I slay, I slay, all day, all day, all day, all day. Who's the friend? Detective James Gordon, ma'am. Hmm. We're gonna see if he still got some magic in that mic. From you, Data, you are fully functional, aren't you? 
Of course, but... How fully? In every way, of course. I am programmed in multiple techniques. A broad variety of pleasuring. Oh, you jewel. That's exactly what I hoped. What did you do with my eggs? Stuffed them up my butt. Mario Pepper, we need to talk. It's me, Mario. Come on, Bennett. It's a party. I'm too sexy for my shirt. Too sexy for my shirt. If she wants to kill policemen, you have to ask me nicely. Look at Jim. Almost me. Look at me. Look at me, okay? Technically, I shouldn't be getting laid, but I do. And do you know why, Dave? There is a mysterious ritual that dates back thousands of years. No living creature has survived it, except the penguin.